can fact check him, fact check, fact check him in real time. Last time at the first debate, we had millions of people uh, fact checking, so I expect we'll have millions more fact checking uh, because you know it is. Uh, it's just awfully good that someone with the temperament of Donald Trump is not in charge of the law in our country. Because you'd be in jail. Secretary Clinton. All right, guys, so I thought the Juicy Smollett trial was the funniest thing I had read slash heard of slash seen all week until I stumbled across this um, clip of Hillary Clinton uh, cry right boo -hoo cry right while reading her would have been victory speech uh from the 2016 election and boy i gotta tell you this is some cringe stuff right it is super cringe and i want you guys to take a look at it didn't as you know write a concession speech because even though we had a lot of bumps those last 10 days uh i i still thought you know we could pull it out so i worked on um a speech that really was about my journey and had a, had a real emphasis on my mother's life and journey as a way of you know making it clear that yes I would be the first woman president but I I like everybody uh, stood on the shoulders and lived the lives uh, and the experiences of those who came before us. I dream of going up to her and sitting down next to her, taking her in my arms and saying, look at me, listen to me. You will survive. You will have a good family of your own and three children. And as hard as it might be to imagine, your daughter will grow up and become the president of the United States. Mm. If as hard it is to imagine, your daughter will grow up to be the president of the United States. <laughs> Bro, oh my God, this is so cringe. Wow, it's been like five years, right? Five whole years. And she is still crying about the fact that she lost, right? Crying about the fact that she lost. And I had serious questions. I have a serious question. Guys, is Hillary running in 2024? Right. No, that's an actual serious question, okay? Because she came out earlier this year and said that she would, quote, never get out of the game of politics. Like, what does that mean, right? She doesn't have any formal positions, I don't think, right? What, I mean, what is she actually doing? So it's like, if you're never out of the game of politics, then what are you actually doing, right? And her coming out here and giving these interviews, right, being back in the news, like she is, uh, to me signals that, <laughs> I don't know, she might be looking to run. Who knows? I mean, can the Democrats get that desperate that they run Hillary again? I mean, Joe was getting up there in age, right? I think he's 78, Clinton 74. Okay, so she's a little younger than him. So age uh, won't really necessarily disqualify her when it comes to, you know, the Democrats. And Joe might not run again. We don't know. He says he is, but we, we really don't know. I, I don't know if his body... <laughs> slash uh mental state can actually handle it i i don't know and the democrats are desperate desperate to find somebody that can take the reins from joe right i mean who is the number one woman in the democrat party right uh is kamala she's also uh the most unpopular vice president in history in history okay is hillary more unpopular than kamala at this point <laughs> i mean who knows but you would think the Democrats would have learned their lesson when it comes to identity politics. But, uh, yeah, um, here's my thing, man. Th this is what makes this so cringe to me. Outside of the fact that it's been five years and she still has not got over the fact that she lost to Trump. Um, a politician that comes out here and acts like they are destined to be in office like they're a king or something like that, that really rubs me the wrong way. Like it really does. Okay, because politicians, uh, people who serve our country, okay, our representatives, our senators, our, our president, you're supposed to do it because you feel like you have to do it, right? You feel like your country needs you. You're not supposed to do it because you feel like you're destined to do it or even because you want to do it. When I listen to a politician 
talk about why they're running for office. The last thing I want to hear is, well, you know, I want to be the first female president of the United States or all my life, I dreamed of being a senator or all my life, I always want to be a representative. All my life, I worked in politics. I don't want to hear that. The reason why I don't want to hear that is because that to me signals narcissism. Uh, and we have enough narcissists in Congress and politics as it is. Hillary Clinton is so obsessed with this idea of becoming the first female president that again, it, it haunts her to this day because she didn't believe that she actually had to earn your vote. There's no doubt in my mind that she believes that she was divinely ordained, okay? Divinely selected to be the first female president of the United States, right? That's what she believes. Matter of fact, she just flat out told you that she didn't write a concession speech because she never thought that she would lose. And that's part of the reason why she lost is because she's arrogant. She felt that way when her and Obama was running against each other in a Democrat primary because she was first lady when Bill was in office and she was a senator. And she damn sure especially felt that way after Obama left office, right? I guarantee you, her thoughts was, all right, we had a black man, now it's time for a woman, right? That That's literally what her thoughts were. And that's why she was so upset about Trump beating her, right? That's why she was so upset about it. Because she was supposed to be the next in line to make history, right? She was supposed to be the next one. And again, to me, it, I, I just, again, it rubs me the wrong way when you see this type of stuff from politicians. You're not divinely ordained to be in office, right? The position's not given to you. You're supposed to be there because you want to serve the American people. Every time I hear Hillary Clinton talk, it's all about me, 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 me. I, 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 I. She never says, hey, you know what? I regret the fact that I wasn't able to serve the American people. I regret the fact that I wasn't able to implement this policy or to get this done, okay? It's always about the fact that, well, I was supposed to be the first woman president of the United States, okay? that That's all it's about. It's her ego, virtue signaling, and identity politics. That's what Hillary Clinton's about, which again, in my opinion, is not a surprise because that's what the Democrat Party is about. So again, when I, when I see this type of stuff, you know, again, it's not only just cringy. It, again, it just reminds me of exactly the type of politicians that do not deserve to be in office, that should not be in office, right? People like Hillary Clinton that believe that she should just be there because of who she is, because I'm next in line. No, that's not how it's supposed to work. We're a democracy, okay? Not a monarchy, okay? So, Hillary, I got some advice for you. <laughs> Get over it. <laughs> Let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.